If you had told me that Port, missing Dixon, Marshall, and Rioli were going to beat Melbourne, I would have told you that the Eagles were going to win the flag this year. And I probably wouldn't have put that 100 down on the Demons. Welcome back to AFL from LA. I'm your host, Cindy. Sir Doug Nichols round. I mean, I couldn't get enough of it. The jumpers, the painted shoes, the ceremony. Sad that I gotta wait another year for that to come around again. So here are my hot takes for round 10. Frio has now won three in a row and has kicked over 100 points in each game. Frio's midfield are mauling opposition midfields. Without Dangerfield and Cam Guthrie, it was like the cats had been declawed. And for the second week in a row, Jeremy Cameron went missing. Well, the delivery to Tom Hawkins was more like the Eagles delivery to Oscar Allen down in Tassie. Frio have made the switch to fast ball movement, which has allowed them to have quality inside 50s. And with Jets like Young and Frederick providing outside run, J-Lo has no excuses for not being able to make a run at finals. Slag mantle anybody? If you're enjoying the show, please like and subscribe as it helps more Aussies get to see the show. Essendon finally stood up and said nobody puts baby in a corner. Wait, that's not right. Nobody beats us 14 times in a row. Credit to big time players Tippa and Stringer for coming alive in the last quarter. Merritt was best on ground with 39 disposals, 7 tackles and 5 clearances. Brad Scott why is he so grumpy? Richmond has now lost 9 and drawn 3 of their last 12 close games. Does that make them the most unclutched team of the competition? I think Richmond's season is over and I think the rest of the comp is breathing a sigh of relief that they won't have to meet them in September. Melbourne needs to be reminded that the game is played over 4 quarters and not just one. And there's this little guy named Zach Butters that they might want to put a little work into. Butters played one of the best games I think this American has ever seen. He took on perhaps the best midfield in the game, in the rain, and destroyed them. I'm not sure why Melbourne went into this game as favorites. They've only played two top eight teams. They lost to one of them, and they would have lost to Gold Coast if it wasn't for such terrible umpiring. And if Melbourne lose to Frio this week at the G, they should definitely be behind Collingwood, Brisbane, and Port Adelaide for flag contestants. Tenders. Port have now become as entertaining as the pies to watch. They nullified May and Lever, keeping Melbourne to just 41 marks. The lowest ever under Simon Goodwin. Does this mean Hinkley gets his contract extension? Ten more years? Do we get to watch more of his little happy dance? On to what promised to be the blockbuster game of the round. Hawthorne versus Eagles. I mean, Carlton versus Collingwood. Collingwood possessed this rare, magical thing called Darcy Moore. Moore was best on ground with 25 disposals, 10 contested, and a 11 intercept marks. It's an AFL record. I heard Michael Voss was about to make another excuse during the post game, and apparently Darcy Moore intercepted that. The Blues clearly thought that Moore was wearing a Carlton jumper as they were kicking everything to him. Likewise, they thought Mackay was wearing a Collingwood jumper as they kicked hardly anything to him. Carlton just couldn't handle the Pies' pressure, and they couldn't win the ball at the source. I was constantly yelling out, who's defending? Pendleton Sidebottom had 20 uncontested possessions in the first quarter. Sidebottom, by the way, is a freak of nature. He's played 300 games and he covers the ground like a 20-year-old. I'm already looking forward to his 400th. Collingwood now have a two-week bye. And by bye, I mean they play North Melbourne and then the Eagles. Carlton plays Sydney and then Melbourne. And even if they come away with four points against the Swans, it's hard to see them challenging the Ds. So can somebody tell me when Toby Green gets out of umpire jail? I mean, does his head have to be completely decapitated from his body before the umpires give him a free kick? He gave a player on the other team a little love tap on the elbow and he was penalized. I'd like to know how long it's going to last because I want to mark it on my calendar. And West Coast Eagles, each week it, it seems to get more and more painful and I'm not sure who it's hardest for. The players, is it the fans, the coaches? After watching the press conference, I think Adam Simpson's, I think his spirit's broken. I think it's time to take some drastic measures and I think it's time to hire a witch doctor to get the curse removed. North Melbourne. Those kids are pretty great. They could have won that game against Sydney. And this crazy interchange penalty that was, I mean, should that have cost them the game? Couldn't they have been fined instead? And what about that ridiculous kick against Todd Goldstein in the end? North, they got a raw deal.